Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a 2D platformer game with nothing but a text editor and your internet browser. So obviously the only things that you're going to really need for this are a text editor such as Notepad and an internet browser like Google Chrome. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I am going to start off in Notepad and the only thing I'm going to use Notepad for is I'm going to use it to create a new file and I have this within my JavaScript tutorial uh, folder here and I'm just going to call this game tutorial html just like that and so now I have an html file called game tutorial and if I go ahead and I double click that it'll open up Google Chrome and it'll open up as you can see a blank html document and so what I'm actually going to go ahead and do is I'm going to open this with a text editor called Adam uh, it's one of my favorites um, I know not that many people like it. Some people either really like it or don't like it, but I'd recommend using it. You can use anything though, Notepad++, just Notepad if you wanted to. But anyways, I'm going to use this, and this will just allow us to edit this HTML page here. And what I'm just going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to paste in a basic HTML layout, because who has time to memorize all of this? And I'll actually just go ahead and just indent this down so you can see. So all that I've done here is, you know, if you don't know basic HTML, um, all this does is this will, uh, this is our CSS up here. Um, I can actually go ahead and fix that up. Let's just change the background color. Then we have script tags, body tags, HTML tags, etc. But the thing that's going to be important for us is this canvas tag right here. So if I go ahead and I save this and then I reload my HTML page, we see that this big canvas object here shows up. And that's good. That's what we want. And so now that we have this canvas object, we can actually go into our JavaScript here, which is what these script tags are for, and we can start to edit that. And so in order to do that, we actually need to create a variable that will relate this canvas object to our JavaScript code. So what we go ahead and do is we can say a var canvas is going to be equal to document.getElements by ID. And notice here that the ID of the canvas object is CTX. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get that ID, CTX. And then we're going to create another variable called ctx. This is just going to be equal to canvas.getContext. And this is just going to be a 2D context. And what this variable, this will be our main variable that will allow us to edit this canvas here. Um, this is actually, this is a very helpful thing to know. If you don't know what this is doing, I'd highly recommend looking into that. But that's not really what this tutorial is about. Um, we want to make a game. Um, so basically once this is done, actually we can actually do one more thing, is we can go ahead and say canvas.focus, and what this will do is this will just make sure that what the player or what the user is automatically clicking on is the canvas. That's going to be important for when we get into moving our player and whatnot, doing keyboard events. So now if we go ahead and do this, I don't know if you can see that, but now uh, the canvas is highlighted by default. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can. But anyways, excuse me. So... Once that's done, we can go ahead and we can start working on our pseudo game loop. So let's go ahead and just call it that like game loop. You can call it what you want. It's essentially it's just an update function because JavaScript doesn't really work like a lot of traditional languages do in that regard. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to create a function called update. And this is obviously going to update our screen. And the main thing that we need for this is we need to call our window object, which will be, you know, the window. And this is going to be window dot request. Oops, I can't spell. So this is going to be request animation frame. Animation, I spell that right, I spell that right, yeah. Animation frame. And this is going to request the animation frame of the function that it's in. And so we actually need to call this twice, just because that's how JavaScript works. And there we go. So what this will do is this now makes this update function uh, our game loop essentially. So anything that we put in here will be called uh, every frame. And what's nice about this is it does essentially all the housekeeping for you. You don't need to worry about performance issues or anything like that. The request animation frame function will take care of that for you. So that's really nice. Uh, so once we have all this done, we can just go ahead and we can start making our game. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create our player guy. And so I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to call him, I'll just name this player. And I like to keep my comments consistent. So our player guy here, he's just going to be a, a rectangle. And so actually before we do anything, we actually need to clear the screen 
just so that way we'll actually be able to update stuff without it like uh, overlapping everything. So we're going to call ctx.clearRect and this is going to clear the rect uh, at position 0, 0 and I'm actually going to go ahead up here and I'm just going to create two variables. One called width and this is going to be equal to our width here which is 900. So we're going to create width of 900 and then a variable called height which is going to be equal to 500. And then we're going to clear the rect of our width and height. So width and then whoops height. There we go. So this will clear the rectangle so that way we can actually update stuff. Okay. So now what we can do is we can, first thing that we want to do really is set something called our fill style. The ctx.fill style will just set the color of that particular object that you're drawing at that point in time. So this is going to be black for our player, because why not? And then we also want to ctx.begin our path while we're doing this. doesn't really matter where you do this as long as you eventually do it through for every object. And this is just going to, once again, help with the housekeeping performance issues stuff. And once we have this, we're just going to say ctx.fillRect with a... Um, we're actually going to create two variables. We're going to create a variable called our x position, and that's going to be equal to 50. And then we're going to create another variable called our y position equal to 50. And the reason that we're going to do this is because we're actually going to set the player to be these two variables, as well as just make him 50 by 50, because why not? And the reason that this is so important is because this is how we're going to move our player, is by editing these two variables. Because this function is going to be called every frame, every second, this function is going to be called. So if we just set two just finite numbers in here, like say we just did like 10 and 10, it would be redrawing the player at 10, 10 every single time. But since we're going to set the player to be drawn at a variable, we can change variables. And especially since we're creating the variable outside of the loop, so that way it won't set it to 50, 50 every single time. If that makes sense. If that didn't make sense, it'll make sense when we implement it. And then after the player, we're actually also going to draw a ground because we're going to use gravity and stuff because it's going to be cool. And we're just going to say CTX once again. We're going to begin a path here. And then let's just another way you can do this doesn't really need to fill rect, rect, whatever. Uh, we're going to draw a rectangle at 0, 490 because the y axis starts at 0 up here, which I don't know if that's normal actually. I feel like it like changes from language, but yeah, zero is up here on the y-axis. So if we want the ground all the way down here, it has to be 490. And then we're gonna make this the width of the screen, and then we'll make it a height of 10 because we don't want it taking up the whole screen. And after that, let's just go ahead and say that. See that? Oh, I forgot one thing. It has to do ctx dot fill if you're gonna use the uh, ctx rex method. So there we go. Oh, and another thing I forgot is uh, we actually want to say ctx dot. We can change the fill style again, and this time we'll make the ground green, just like that. So that way we can distinguish between the two, or whatever. Okay. So once we got that, uh, we can actually start working on our player movement, which is pretty much all we're going to do in this video here because it gets a little uh, redundant, but it's good. It's all good. So. The first thing we need to do is obviously we need to add like a key listener so that way when the player's you know on the canvas he, the canvas is going to be listening waiting for him to press a key. So how we do that we're just going to say canvas dot add event listener spell that right add event listener and this is going to be a key down event and we need to uh, call a function that we want to be called on a key down event and this function is just going to be called move player now we haven't created this yet but we will in just a minute and we actually have to reference this function one more time we're going to go up here to our HTML canvas object and we're going to say on key press that's going to be equal to the function that we just called. So that's going to be equal to move player, except up here we actually have to add the variable that it's going to take in, and this is going to take in an event variable. And uh, yeah, so that's that's really important that you add that event variable in there. And then similarly, we also need to have a key up um, method, so that way we can tell when the player is no longer pressing a key. So it should say on key up, and this is going to equal another uh, function that we're going to create in just a minute here, and we'll just call this key up, and this once again needs to take in an event variable, just like that. Okay. 
So once that's all well and good, there's one more thing we need to create before we start making these two uh, functions that we just called, and that is a keys object. The reason we're doing this is so that way we'll be able to move multiple keys at once, so that way we'll be able to code like up into the right and left into the right and things like that. And so how we create an object in JavaScript, there are many ways, but this is, for our purposes, this is how we need to do it. We just need to set it equal to a pair of brackets, and then we're going to set our up as false, our right as a false object, and then our left as a false object. Now, the reason I'm not doing a downward object is because we're going to use gravity as our downward motion for now. And so these are all going to be false by default, so that way, you know, the player doesn't start off moving to the right, left, up, or down. We have to actually wait until the user uh, hits a key. And so now that all of this is done, we can finally go ahead and start making our function. So we'll just do player movement functions here. And within our player, for our player movement functions, we're actually going to need... Uh, well, just for player movement in general, I should say, we're going to need two variables, and one is going to be called is jumping, and this is going to start off equal to false. This is going to check whether or not the player is actually jumping, whether or not you know the player is moving upwards. That's going to be important for gravity. And then we're also going to need a variable for speed, just so we don't have to write the same number a billion times. Okay, so now these two variables are set, we just go ahead and create our function move player. This is once again going to take in an event. And we're going to use a switch case statement here. So we're going to switch on the event.keycode here. And you kind of have to memorize what the different key numbers are. So I'll just go ahead and I'll comment them so you don't lose track of them. So for our right key down event here, this is going to be case 39. That's for the right key. And in case 39, what we want to do is we just want to, you know, reference back to our keys thing here. And how we do that is we're going to say our keys right object is going to just be equal to true. And obviously we want to break. And then for our next one, let's go ahead, let's do the left one. So we'll say left key down. Uh, left key down is going to be, what is that? Case 37. So case 37, then we just want to say keys left is going to be equal to true and then obviously you want to break again and then finally for our up key down we want to say this is going to be case 38 and in case 38 we actually want to do two things we want to say is jumping is going to be true so that obviously, obviously when the player is going up we're going to say that he's jumping and so we're going to set that variable equal to true and then we also want to set our up key equal to true just like that and then finally we want to break and then the next uh, function that we reference up here is our key up. So let's go ahead and name it that. We're actually just going to copy this and then rename it key up here. And this is once again is also going to take in an event variable. Oh my god, I cannot spell today. And this is just going to essentially reverse everything. So this is going to set this to false, 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 and false. It's just going to reverse everything that our move player function uh, did. Okay. So once we have all this set up, this doesn't actually move the player. This just allows us to start, uh, this allows us to create a method that will move the player. Not really a method, but like an if statement, basically. So how we're going to do this is we're going to just use a bunch of if statements. So we're going to say if keys up is equal to true, or you know, I'm not going to actually say equal to true, but if keys up, because it's a Boolean variable. So if the player is just going up, so if keys up is just true, but keys, you know, right and keys left are not true. Let me make sure that's a not, don't forget that not there. So if the player is just going up, you know, nothing else is happening, player just wants to go up, what we're going to go ahead and say is we're going to say that the y position of the player is going to minus equal the speed. Because remember I said that the y position is less as you go up. Okay. So similarly, we'll also do the constants for just right and left. So we're going to say else if the player is just going to the right and the player is not going up. We don't have to do a case for, you know, going to the right and not going up and not going left because the player should not be going right and left at the same time, obviously. So the player is going to the right, but the player is not going up, so they just want to move to the right. You know, they're just scooting along the ground. 
then in that case, what we want to say, we just want to say our x position is going to plus equal um, our speed variable here. And then the same thing is can be said of our left, except instead of plus equals, we're just going to minus equals. So then finally we get into the good stuff where we're going to say if the player is going up and to the left and so on. So the player is going up and to the right, let's just go ahead and get rid of that not. So in this case, the player is pressing both the right arrow key and the up arrow key. So in this case, we want to move the X position and the Y position. So we want to say Y speed just like that. And then we go ahead, we can copy this, and we can say if the player is going left and to the right, then we just want to change the direction of the X position, just like that. So now we have all the different possible movements that we can think of all right here. So I'll just go ahead and say that player movement. And then the last thing that we're going to need for this tutorial is gravity. And this is probably one of the easiest things to do because we're going to keep it nice and simple for now. So all we're going to say for gravity is if the Y position of the player is less than some arbitrary number, we'll just call it 440 because that's like, you know, about here-ish. I don't know. So if it's less than 440, you know, if the player is somewhere up here in the air and the player is not jumping, so if the player is not jumping and they're above the ground, then all we want to do is we just want to say that the Y position is going to plus equal the speed, just like that. And so after all of this, our function should finally work. So if we go ahead, we reload this, and we got an error. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and see what the error was. It is on line 21, and let's see, what is it? Canvas, I misspelled canvas. That is perfect. There we go. We good? We're good. Okay, so as you see, our player can move around, there's gravity, and it's nice and fluid movement. It's not like this blocky type of movement that you'll often like see, but it's good movement just like that. Just how we want it for this tutorial. So that's all that this tutorial is going to cover. In a later tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a scoring system, how to add some more stuff like platforms, moving platforms, stuff like that. But anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And all the source code will be down in the description. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And yeah, see you next time. Bye.